Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. With somewhere around 17, 18 million veterans out there, it begs the question why veterans are not applying for and receiving VA disability benefits because around 30% are, meaning 70% are not. So 70% of that 17 or 18 million veterans are not filing for VA disability compensation. Now, I've had these types of conversations before, and really it's to kind of, I guess, spread the awareness because in my mind, there's several things that inhibit a veteran from applying for VA disability benefits. And part of it is just the name itself, disability benefits. When you hear the word disability, you automatically assume that it's got to be a physically disabling, majorly physically disabling condition, like loss of limb or loss of use, those types of things. Now, for any of you out there that are already service-connected, you know that that's not the case. But for the other 70%, You know, these are little roadblocks that get put up in our own minds. And so I wanted to just kind of read through this. I did find, I pulled up, you know, to to have another, uh, I guess, viewpoint on this. I have my own viewpoint on just kind of the the stopping blocks, right? Save it for somebody else who needs it. Uh, I'm fine. I have all my fingers and toes. Um, You know, it's it's a handout. I don't need it. You know, the... The problem with the VA, honestly, is the DOD aspect, because DOD VA, right? As you're joining the military, nobody explained to you that part of your benefits package, like working for a huge corporation, right? Your benefits package. Instead of getting stock options, you get access to the VA for anything that manifests within you during your time in service. As long as it's a diagnosed condition that is chronic in nature or has some sort of residual effects. That's anything from migraine headaches, hiatal hernia, degenerative disc disease, arthritis, hypertension, the list goes on. So it's not just I'm missing a hand or a foot. It's much more than that. So with that, let's jump into this article. Let's read some of the reasons why folks are not applying for VA disability compensation and see what we can figure out. Now, I did find this actually on uh, one of the bigger law firms, Hill and Potton. Uh, they, uh, you know, obviously do a lot of VA um, appeal work for veterans and so forth. And um, anyway, this is one of the ones that popped up and I figured, well, getting it from an attorney's viewpoint, you know, maybe maybe it might be good to hear. So let's read through this. Uh, it goes on here to say that, uh, well, I'll skip the beginning part. So it, why are veterans not filing? One, application issues. What they're saying here is perhaps one of the most pressing reasons why you may forego filing altogether is because the confusing nature of the application itself, misunderstanding about the process, confusion about the uh, qualification process keeps veterans from their disability benefits. Now, I would agree. I mean, it is cumbersome. It looks overwhelming. You're not sure what the burden of proof is. You know, how, how much proof do I need to supply? Um, and I'll tell you that working with an accredited representative, a veteran service office uh, or veteran service rep, somebody who's accredited with the VA is is a good way to go to help you make sure that your I's are dotted and T's are crossed. It moves on to say, some of the most common complaints and issues regarding the VA application process are using the wrong VA forms and missing important deadlines. Those are two super true statements. Um, always, 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 if you're going to do a claim yourself, if you're not doing it on the VA's website and you're actually doing it on paper forms, make sure you get those paper forms directly from the VA's website because if you don't, you risk them being dated. That's Stan in the background chiming in for those that don't know. He's my rooster. All right, Uh, moving on. uh, The missing important deadlines, another thing. uh, If you get, for example, a proposal for reduction, you have... 30 days to have them stop that process, not reduce you while they figure out what's going to happen. If you do not 
uh, chime back in with them to dispute that within that 30 days, they will reduce you. You can still dispute it, but you're reduced along that way. These deadlines are super important and vets are notorious for going, oh, that sucks. I hate the VA. Throw it behind you and then you forget about it for three months and you get back to it and it's too late. Moving on. Uh, if you're filing after a denial, it can be difficult to decipher which form to use. In addition, veterans' disability claims are highly time sensitive with many different dates to remember. So, you know, after a denial, you have uh, 12 months to file your next move, whether it's a review, such as a higher level review or a supplemental claim, or pushing it to the Board of Veterans' Appeals if that's necessary. Uh, second reason here, giving up on claims, and oh, by the way, there's eight reasons here that we're going to go through. Uh, so giving up on claims, no doubt about it. The claims process for VA disability is intimidating. Yeah, it's understandable that many veterans give up entirely once they see the paperwork and time involved. I will tell you this. Treat your VA disability claims process like it's a multi-million dollar deal because it is. When you couple in, especially if you have age on your side, um, you have a, a multitude of things. You have your VA disability compensation coming in for however many years are left. You have educational uh, opportunities through VR and E. Uh, veterans readiness and employment. If you get to the 100% mark, your spouse has and dependents have chapter 35. You have health care that's for life. You have health care through CHAMP VA for your spouse and dependents if, uh, if you reach that 100% permanent in total. So there's a lot of uh, financial value to VA claims besides the monetary aspect. Moving on, there is free help from, uh, there is free help available to work through a lot of these issues uh, and a lot of the issues involved, like a county VSO, Veteran Service Officer. Well, as you know, here on this channel and also on Veterans Daily, we consistently push utilizing that uh, Veteran Service Officer uh, if you have the ability to do so. I get it. Not everybody's cut from the same cloth. You might have somebody who's not good. Try to find somebody else. However, a lot of times these government agencies and services have significant wait periods and lack of customer service because of staffing and budget limitations. Well said, I say it myself all the time, first time that uh, I've ever read this, and I'm glad that you, Hill and Potten, are on the same page. Thank you so much. Uh, so moving on, for many, a negative experience with the claims process and getting a denial is good enough reason to forgo trying for disability benefits. True, you get turned away once, and you're like, screw this, I'm not gonna go through that again. Number three, confusion about who can file. There's a lot of confusion around who is actually eligible for VA benefits. Many veterans are eligible, but they simply don't realize that they are. I absolutely agree. I implore the 70% of veterans who are not connected to the VA to make an appointment with an accredited representative and just go in there and have a conversation. Uh, if you're not getting it enough from YouTube telling you that you possibly qualify for something, get in with a veteran service rep, have that conversation. They'll help you order your records if you don't know how to. If you want to yourself, you can do that with an SF-180. SF-180. Uh, here's uh, there's there's some common myths about eligibility and uh, they have those written in here and I'm probably going to do a breakout video on that alone. Uh, so keep your eyes open on that. The bottom line is is that you you qualify but you don't think you do. So uh, moving on, don't think number four. This is number four. Don't think they can pursue more than one disability claim. So veterans don't think that they can pursue more than one. You could take as many bites of the VA apple as you would like. There is that, um, I don't know, this, this thing of fear out there about getting reduced. Look, if you're filing for claims and you're getting approved appropriately and your condition's not getting better and you're continuing to go to the doctor, you're not gonna get reduced. And even if they tried to, all your documentation shows that you shouldn't be. And, and on top of that, as time moves by, and you're showing that uh, steady, we'll call it a decline in your um, situation, your condition, uh, then you're going to e even be more protected as you have the five-year rule, you have uh, your condition is most likely going to be considered static. Um, that's, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, sure, be 
be be aware that you can be reduced but i i think fearful is the wrong wrong approach it it uh it basically makes you freeze up and you don't move forward so Let's move on. Oftentimes, many of your injuries and illnesses impact each other, so it's a logical step to pursue all of your VA claims at once. It ultimately helps you save time by not having to wait on individual claims in this case. So you would file, if you have six things, file six clean things at one time. You're not filing one claim for one condition, then waiting for that, and then filing your next one. I've seen not my not my suggestion, by the way, but I did see uh, a claim for 80 something. I can't remember the number. 83 ish conditions. So, you know, you can stack as many on there as you want when you file it. Filing all of your claims at once is likely the best solution because while the process may slow down a little, but not necessarily, you still will likely get multiple decisions around the same time. Even if you find yourself in a situation where you've already filed but then realize there's something new you'd like to pursue, it is usually the best choice to file. That's an important piece here and I'm going to I'm going to kind of disagree on the usually part. And here's why. So what they're saying here is you filed a claim, initial claim with let's say, for example, eight conditions. Then your claim's been in process for six months. Now, all of a sudden you go, oh, I forgot to add, for example, tinnitus. Okay, well, tinnitus is a 10% rating and you're going to slow down all of your other process, which could be decided in a few months, because what will happen will be the VA will get now two claims and they'll merge those two together and back up and start working that tinnitus claim with your others. It's going to drag it on a few months, probably longer. If you are in need of that financial stability quicker, it's probably better just to leave it alone and then file your intent to file your, um, well, an intent to file as well, but also file your, um, tinnitus claim after the decision on your other seven or eight claims or whatever you put in. Now, if the reverse is true, then yes, absolutely file it right away. If you just filed a claim for tinnitus, one one claim, and then later on you found out six months later, oh, I could have filed all these eight at the same time. I never knew. I have seven more things I needed to file for. Absolutely. File those seven, let them merge them together, and then run them all together. All right. Moving on. Uh, remember, you can also file a claim years after service. Absolutely. I've had people file 50 years after service. I myself filed for a claim that I was not even diagnosed for until, I don't even remember, 20 years after service. Okay, 20 years after service got diagnosed and um, got awarded. So um, that's an important aspect too. There is no deadline. Many uh, severe symptoms in certain conditions seen in veterans don't actually manifest until it's been a lengthy amount of time post-service. Don't think your time is up. Number five, remember we're going to eight, skipping compensation and pension exams. Another often frustrating hurdle is the CNP exam, compensation and pension exam. The VA will often schedule this exam in connection with the compensation application. This is not an optional exam. If you do not attend, the VA can deny your application solely for that reason. Improperly rescheduling or failing to attend a CNP is a common reason veterans miss out or stop pursuing their well-deserved benefits. Number six, concerns about their eligibility. A very common myth in regards to VA disability benefits is that if you pursue this option, then you will be prohibited from being employed. Okay, so concerns about your employment. Uh, is uh, is an issue, right? So, in other words, I get rated 70%. Now I'm this disabled veteran. Now I can't get employed. So, concerns about your employment. Uh, a lot of misinformation is floating around about VA ratings and subsequent monetary compensation. This misunderstanding commonly exists between. Geez, stands on one. I, you know, welcome to here the the chicken channel. All right. 
this misunderstanding commonly exists because of a VA program known as TDIU, which is Total Disability Individual Unemployability, where disabled veterans receive 100% VA disability compensation because they cannot keep or obtain employment. Veterans who are awarded VA ratings and subsequent compensation may still maintain employment without limitation and could be entitled to a variety of benefits. So what they're saying here is, is that when you reach that 100% mark for pay, for example, a service member with a spouse and one dependent is paid out about $4,100 per month. Well, there's several different ways to get to 100% pay. You can just have all your conditions add up to 100%. Bam, you're paid uh, at that 100% mark. Uh, you can have all of your conditions add up to 100% and they're all static, meaning that the VA feels as though none of those conditions are going to get better and they deem you permanent and total. Uh, and then you're still paid out 100% and you get that $4,100 tax-free per month. Then you have TDIU, Total Disability Individual Unemployability. That is pretty much folks that are in that 60 to 90% range as far as a rating is concerned, but their condition uh, is severely impacting their ability to hold or maintain or uh, have any sort of gainful employment. So the VA grants them TDIU, which pays them out at... Wow, he is right there. All right, I, I can't reach him because there's a wall otherwise. So TDIU... Uh, pays out 100%. So you could be a 70% veteran, for example, and get TDIU and get paid $4,100 a month if you have a spouse and a, a dependent. So there's also uh, temporary, but that's kind of not really what we're focused on here. So uh, you have different ways to get to 100%. Uh, the only one that has any sort of income or employment kind of limitation would be that TDIU. Number seven and then eight so we're almost over. Number seven, confusing Social Security benefits with VA disability benefits. Social Security disability and VA service-connected disability are not the same. These two programs can often cause confusion and lead to missing out on benefits. Just because you may be receiving Social Security benefits does not mean you automatically qualify for VA disability and vice versa. When you're pursuing both options, you are likely losing out on compensation Wait, when you aren't, when you aren't, are not, when you are not pursuing both options, you are likely losing out on compensation that you deserve. <laughs> Number eight, and this is the last one, and Stan is excited about it, is uh, concerns over legal rights. A big concern amongst veterans is filing for mental health treatment and claims. Mental health ratings from the VA and mental uh, incompetence are entirely two different things. There's been a lot of conversation out there uh, within the Senate uh, and I guess Congress in general regarding veterans' rights for Second Amendment and issues with the VA who have folks put on to um, fiduciary uh, kind of status where they have somebody manage their funds uh, and then their second amendment is taken away. So here from Hill and Potten, they are saying mental health ratings from the VA and mental incompetence are entirely two different things. So I just wanted to tie in that second amendment piece. Having a mental health condition does not by itself put a veteran at risk for losing their constitutionally protected rights. If you are suffering from PTSD, anxiety, depression, or other mental health conditions, it's important to seek care and not discount pursuing filing for disability uh, to help. So with that, that concludes it. There's eight reasons why people really don't go after uh, their VA disability compensation. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.